Twin Peaks is TV unlike any other TV. Uh, it's art, it deals with life and death and love and the simple pleasures of eating pie and smelling trees and listening to the wind. In the pilot, they, they walk into the bank um, to get the safety deposit box and there's a moose head on the table and that's when I fell in love with the series. Twin Peaks never insulted your intelligence. It lets your mind open up to go, well, it could be this, and maybe, and you didn't know what direction. It was, I always thought that was the coolest thing about the show. People really kind of equate a fan festival to something like um, a sci-fi convention or Star Trek convention, you know, something of that nature. Um, this is something very different. You're driving through the town, you see the filming locations like the uh, what's now Tweed's Cafe that was the double R, and you're like, oh my god, that's so cool, but then you're, you're driving up to the building where the sign-in is located, and you're like, this could be, either be really awesome or really, like, weird, and I was like, had this nervous laughter as I was walking in with my friend, because you don't know what to expect. During a typical Twin Peaks festival, um, the celebrities are usually there throughout the weekend at as many events as we can get them to. Um, so the fans have plenty of opportunities to meet the celebrities, chat with them, get autographs, pictures, and get questions answered. We are co-organizers for the Twin Peaks Festival. Hello! My favorite part is watching the fans because you get new people every year and you see the enthusiasm. First time attendees, their favorite part is the celebrities and getting to see some of the people that were on the show. But after you've come enough times, it really becomes just the people. I'm Bill Cole. This is my wife, Rebecca Cole. And we're here because we're huge Twin Peaks fans and we're on our honeymoon. This is uh, my 12th festival. Uh, I was here for the first fan festival in 1993 and uh, only missed two since they started, uh, 97 and 98. I went to my first one in 1997 when the dwarf was dancing here. But the dwarf hasn't been here for a few years. The dwarf really scared a few people, especially girls. This is my third time at the festival, and I brought him for his first time. She talked me into coming. It's his 30th birthday, so I bought him tickets. She bought me tickets for my 30th birthday. 30th. <laughs> it's a lot like uh, this alternate reality rubbing against with the real reality, and it's the closest thing you can get to entering a fantasy world. There's a very certain person, I think, that gets into this and really enjoys it. The moment that sold me on Twin Peaks was involving the original Red Room sequence. I saw that as a method used to give out clues for the, for the show. And I just thought, my god, this is genius. And I was watching it with my father, who is uh, at the time in his mid-50s and an old-fashioned conservative gentleman from the South. And he's watching it and he's just like, that's weird. I'm from a town very similar to, you know, uh, it's, a, I don't know, population 6,000 probably. So a small town, you know, the, the same types of people, quirky, you know, people without teeth and such. Throughout my teenage years and my adult life, you know, I've always been a little bit different. <laughs> I got into the series when I was 13 years old. I found The Secret Diary, and I think any young girl who's going through finding herself sexually, going through drugs and experimentation, will uh, identify with Laura Palmer, and she's my favorite. I have my... my what I, my screensaver slideshow and people are always going asking me what why is there a dead girl on your computer <laughs> it's kind of unique you know having people you know who love the show that was on 15 years ago you know 16 years ago that are still into it very into it very into theories just you know even just quoting lines with you there's a fish in the percolator there's a fish in the percolator <laughs> I'm bad when it comes to remembering lines and stuff like that. Just thinking about uh, how you could accidentally get a, get a fish, a fish in, your in your percolator. percolator. Uh, just that, that, that's, uh, yeah, I find that Hard truly hilarious. <laughs> 
Okay, let's go. Over here to my right is the Snoqualmie Valley Railroad Museum. Right now we're going to the Fall City Grill. You can hear like this crackling of the neon sign. This is the location of Moe's Motor. The one-armed man turns around and then comes and is mm. sitting beside the Palmer vehicle. Big Ed's gas farms changed hands like six different times and it looks completely different. It was a kite store. Uh, it was a place called Butchie's. It was a church. And it currently is a some sort of granite store. They sell granite, I guess. Locals jump off this bridge. Oh my God. Really okay, one, two, three. One, two, three. Is this one turned on? Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Perfect. So that's the tour. Thanks. Thank you. We try and throw in a few little changes every so often if we can. Kind of stir things up. The first day is usually the sign in and then the film night. And then Saturday is bus tours, hikes down to the falls, um, and the Twin Peaks Town Hall. I'm Pat Coquell, and I owned the Marquee Cafe when they were filming Twin Peaks, and for nine, eight, eight years afterwards, and so I got to see all the stars and the um, Twin Peaks fans, and uh, David Lynch was just as pleasant as he can be. I have pictures of him sitting in the booth, and me standing there with my hand on the booth talking to him. But I, I never knew that they were putting the pies and the coffee in the series. They would send over from the office, which was across the street, and have pies delivered. Most often it was the peanut butter cream. And, you know, I, they didn't order cherry to go over there that I remember at all. Saturday night is the big dinner with, with uh, the celebs and the Q&A is there and a bunch of stuff happens there. I think we're going to start the Q&A, is that correct? Cool. So, we can ask Jan and Kimmy and Phoebe to come up. Uh, do you guys have any interesting stories? Uh, we can just go down the line about your interview process uh, when you were, uh, uh, not interviewing, auditioning for Twin Peaks. I, I don't know how I feel about this, telling this, but um, because it kind of makes me seem prudish, maybe, but after, after I read and Cheryl Lee read, um, they came to both of us, we were standing side by side, and they said, well, we have a decision to make. Um, we have two girls and we have two parts, and we need to know if either one of you have a problem with nudity. And I was really young and had not dated very much or anything, was just newly married, and um, I said, I think I might have a problem with nudity. And Cheryl Lee said, I have absolutely no problem with that. <laughs> what made you decide to participate in these fests, um, either in the past or even this year? Well, the first time I, I agreed to come up here was because the people who asked me, I was so impressed with how sweet they were. Just good people, and I could tell. And so who could say no to that? And then I said I would come back because I enjoyed the company. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah. And it's an incredible <coughs> learning experience because you're re reliving something where you were a totally different person. You know, we we thought it was really a really cool like show to be on and we felt really grateful because you don't get those kind of breaks in this business unless you screw somebody a lot. <laughs> and your last name is Douglas or something. It's just amazing how much people have affinity towards this series and the creativity of it. And so it's always wonderful to be identified with that and people ask you questions about it. So that's why I keep coming. <laughs> We do have a costume contest that uh, the fans get really involved in. It's fantastic. This is our first year coming to the um, to the fest, so we thought we'd go, you know, Dale, Laura, whatever, whatnot, and then we'd just go super obscure the next year. We're either going to go as Dr. Jacoby's coconut. <laughs> <laughs> 
or I was thinking also of the seamstress when Audrey is in the um, she's like a weird at one eye jocks. Like she kind of has a hunchback and she's <laughs> like wearing a potato sack and she's very, you know, very Disney character. So I thought I could identify with that. <laughs> Name, location, and character. Chris Matthews, Seattle, Washington. Party time, Leo Johnson. <laughs> 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 There's always uh, a Laura wrapped in plastic. That's always that's a popular costume. Uh, outfit at the costume contest was the lingerie that Laura Palmer was wearing when she was killed. It was a little nerve-wracking walking around in my underwear, but yeah, I had a good time. I was Madeline Ferguson, uh, Laura's cousin, in her death scene. The two weeks before I came here, I wanted to be in the mood, so I rewatched the whole series, and that scene came on, and I was like, "That's it." Third place is our death scene girl. And second place is number five. I figured he'd make a perfect dandy. Because <laughs> he's kind of quirky and clumsy, you know, and had the same hair. <laughs> number one is just because when I walked in, I thought somebody was visiting here. <laughs> Number four. I came as Agent Dale Cooper. Um, well, for a couple of the reasons, the biggest one is that I, just an accident of birth, I guess you could call it, I, I look fairly similar to him. Vanessa said there's a lot of similarities uh, there, between there my is. personality and just who I am in real life. And well, some, of the, some of the character, some of the characterizations American of Agent Real Cooper <laughs> on the he'd TV series. He'd never seen the show. He'd go around and blow on a duck call, and now understand why I laughed. I was just couldn't stand it. And I'm like, you just, you gotta watch it. You'll get it. I felt the people who won really worked for it. They did work for it, except for that Maddie character. Okay, this is the trivia game. Is everybody who is not sitting in that area sure that they don't want to be in the trivia game? The, free fri the prize is a free ticket to next year's festival. Your question is, what type of table is at the convenience store? Formica. What? Is that for Micah? For Micah. Is that for Micah? Is that Judges? Yes. Formica. Judges? That's how I talk! <laughs> a pond. Orchids. What's the title of it? Ute, Montana? Exactly right. Well, Cooper does have white eyes, that's correct. Yeah. So you're right. Mary, you just won a free ticket to next year. I won the trivia contest, which was totally an amazement. Because those guys were good. They And I guess they win like every year. And out of the blue, I came and won. So that was very, very exciting to me. Fourteen years of festival, it's never rained on this day. But oh well. I bet it won't last for more than ten minutes. <laughs> we'll see. We still have the um, Tibetan rock toss contest to do, the cherry um, stem tying contest to do. There's the rain. This is the first time it's rained in the festival, but uh, the, the picnic's going well. Uh, cherry pie, apple pie, everyone loves the, the cherry as usual. Let's dispense with the cherries. Oh, go ahead. You, can, you can pass them down. <laughs> Do not put the stem in your mouth at this time. Just go ahead and dispose of your cherry. On the command of go, pop the stem in your mouth. The first person that ties it or not is the winner. Mark, get set, go. <laughs> and they're off. Coming in third rain. Number five. Number five. Number five. Number five. Number five. Number five. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh! And Rachel is the winner. <laughs> Oh, it, it. Proof is in the pudding. How are you still single? I have the gap, so I can hold it. Oh. <laughs> Horrible, terrible gap. I think Robin has acquired enough rocks. Woo! -hoo! I got a woohoo. I think we're good. Tibetan rock throw. We're 
we're cheating. We're doing halfway. The, you know, according to the show, it's 60 paces. Well, I counted 30, and it seemed far enough. I am wearing yeah, heaven mitts. Mitts up here. Here's usually how this goes. You you say a, a name <laughs> that you want to dedicate your your rock to. Ronette Pulaski. Too bad she's not here anymore. Oh wow. Johnny Horn. Churros! Long story! Oh. Oh. You hit it! <laughs> let's make a note! Okay, let's let's move five paces closer because we're on round two. The log! Waldo the bird! It's like a family reunion, really, is what it is every year, and that's my favorite part. Not any specific events, but just hanging out with people that you've, you know, met over the years. My very first night here in, uh, in Washington, uh, made friends that I'm friends with to today. My best friends are from here, and we stay in touch online, and uh, yeah, we always have a good time together. I have a lot in common. Well, you find just this great group of people who come together with so many different backgrounds and just melt. There's this camaraderie, and uh, that is what draws you in, and then once you experience it, people keep coming back year after year. As long as fans are interested, the festival will continue. There's other places I'd like to go, but every year I end up saving all my money to come here. <laughs> I did spend my government uh, scholarship money to come here, which was cool, and I skipped one of my best friend's weddings yesterday, which I didn't call or let them know, but if this goes on the DVD, um, Justin and Michelle, I hope you had a great wedding, and I'm sorry. I said to Eric, I said, can we go, please, please, please? And he's like, okay, let's and go. So here we are. Here we are. First fest, first plane ride, first everything. We, we take small vacations and things, but this is the first big We've one been we married take. almost nine years and never really taken a trip. So this is a big deal. <laughs> it's a really big deal for many reasons. And it's been, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, just a really blast. Just a blast. For the two of us, this is the best honeymoon we could have ever had. I mean, this our honeymoon. Everything that I got into Twin Peaks for and what I thought I would find by coming to the real Twin Peaks uh, turned out to be true. I, I loved, you know, eating cherry pie and, you know, whatever. And just, just hanging out with people and, and meeting people that, you know, I could be really good friends with these people if we lived by each other, I think. This is what I refer to as my Mecca. <laughs> this is the pilgrimage I take every year, my three days of complete relaxation and get away from it all. There's definitely something there uh, that, that keeps people coming back that's, that's of value and um, it's, it's so important to perpetuate something that deserves to go on. just has this look of, I can't even explain it, but, oh, sorry. And it's just really, really, um, it's just funny, because the way those two look at each other. You want to redo that <laughs> I am just on the verge of solving the mystery of the egg. Security guards might come up, just ignore them. We've been partying here. This is, this is a it's party. an open bar. To, we came here to party and it's an open bar. We're not responsible for what we're saying. We just signed our lives away, so. I'm um, going to publish it um, in a film very shortly. My film will come up shortly. It's going to be called The Egg. <laughs>